Hello and welcome to this episode of IPcast, a podcast on IP-related matters by Starks, a niche law firm specializing in intellectual property law and international trade law. My name is Maria baitsova wienans and I'll be your host today. Some of you might know that aside from being a European trademark attorney, I'm also a mediator with WIPO and CAFA, Court of Arbitration for Art. Actually, it is exactly the relationship between mediation and art that I would like to talk about in this episode. However, first of all, mediation as such. According to the legal definition, mediation is an approach to conflict resolution, when a neutral third party assists the parties at conflict to reach an agreement that both of them feel is fair. This feeling of fairness is very important, but I'll come back to that. Mediator doesn't decide for the parties and is totally neutral. What is important is that mediation is focused on needs, perceptions, assumptions, mythology, concerns, beliefs, values, fears. It is the process where not only plain legal facts have an impact, but also emotions and cultural influences. They are all equally to be taken into account. Would mediation be a good choice for art-related disputes? I believe it would, and it in fact also is. You see, art is as versatile as human nature. There is rarely an art object that is plain and straightforward. Most of the times, there is numerous layers, influences, interpretations and perceptions. Conflicts where art objects are involved are likewise multifaceted. It's not only purely legal issues which are at stake. Frequently, there are also moral and cultural, historical, diplomatic, even spiritual considerations involved. Even art-related legal issues alone are generally fairly complex because of the lack of uh, uniform legal norms. Often, art-related disputes are cross-border. Besides, sometimes art-related disputes are a direct consequence of certain historical events, which might also still lack legal appraisal. To drop a metaphor, trying to solve art-related disputes in a national court of a particular country is like trying to squeeze a three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional frame, hoping that somehow it would fit. The bottom line is, it does not. And even if it does, it becomes a weird installation. In this sense, mediation might be an optimal choice, because it not only provides for the possibility to take different factors into account when coming up with a solution, but also allows certain creativity as to the solution itself. For example, in the claim concerning the picture by Jan Griffith the Elder before the Spoliation Advisory Board, which strictly speaking was not a mediation, yet a keen process in essence, the solution served interests of all the parties involved in a fairly creative way. A commemorative plaque was put next to the painting in the Tate Gallery, which was honoring the need for recognition of the suffering of the Holocaust victims. Additionally, there was an ex gracia payment made to the family of the plaintiff. This solution achieved much more than any court decision would have been able to achieve. Not only because the real interests of parties at dispute were taken into consideration, and even not only because the ultimate solution was beneficial and accepted by both parties, but it also allowed parties to save future relationships instead of focusing only on redressing the past wrongs. So the solution was perceived as fair by both parties. Mediation might equally be the fastest procedure, like in the case related to Tasmanian human remains, the three-day session solved what was a 20-year-old painful dispute. The complexity of this case was enhanced by the fact that not only pure property rights were at stake, but there was a clash between property rights and Aboriginal cultural and spiritual beliefs. Ignoring the latter would have had a detrimental impact exceeding far beyond the conflict in question, potentially even into a diplomatic sphere. The case was solved in mediation, whereas the complexity of the matter was embraced and the solution reached was future-oriented and fostering relationships. Likewise, in Cincinnati Art Museum v. Jordan case over the panel of Taiki, the solution embraced creativity available in the mediation process. Parties in disputes agreed to jointly exchange molds of the respective parts of the panel of Taiki. That allowed both sides to be able to present the work in its entirety, in the end benefiting many more people than just those involved in a dispute. Thus, mediation appears to offer flexibility, creativity and numerous options otherwise unavailable to the parties. It may solve long-standing disputes relatively rapidly compared to 
to traditional litigation at least, save money, protect or even enhance relationships. What can possibly go wrong? Well, to begin with, art does not belong solely to the private domain and public interests on many counts should also be considered. The nature of mediation, in the sense, contributes to a collision between the private interests and interests of the general public. A notable example of this is the dispute between Norton Simon and the government of India. In this case, parties agreed that with settlement of this particular dispute, the government of India would abstain from taking any action against Mr. Simon in connection with any other Indian antiquity acquired by him outside India, and that for the upcoming year. While, from the private interest perspective, this is a viable solution, one might question whether it would benefit the general public. Finally, the success of mediation is a combination of numerous factors. Amongst these factors is the willingness of parties to actively participate in the process and to assume maximum responsibility for their ultimate agreement. Also, in art-related disputes, perhaps even more than in some other cases, the right mediator is essential for the success of the process. Formally, it's up to the parties in mediation to bring in and solve all their issues. However, skills and the ability of mediator to see the art-related dispute in all its versatility is crucial in order to duly assist the process. But done right, mediation might be an ideal dispute resolution process for art-related disputes. That's it from me for today. In the description to this episode, I will add some links to the cases I mentioned, as well as to the Court of Arbitration for Art. Check it out. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked this episode, please press the sweet heart button and do share it with your colleagues or friends. And as always, for any questions, suggestions, comments or concerns, our email address is info at starks.be. Starks, your sustainable growth supporter.